right, sign up for that for sure. We can use some more laughs. Good morning, everybody. I'm Bart Stever. I'm the senior minister here at Parkside. And some of you may be here for the very first time. And this is a little different day. It's a happy, sad day. Uh, we are happy for Lynn Woods, who has been our student minister for the past 18 months, because, <laughs> because God is calling him and Tasha and their little girl, Anaya, uh, to a new ministry down in Florida. Nice place to be called right now. But uh, so that's the happy part. But the sad part is we don't want to say goodbye to you. We love you guys. We love you. Yeah. So this is just a little conversation uh, to say goodbye, and Lynn can share some things with you, whatever he would like to say. But um, it's been so good. It's been such a good 18 months together. And I, I told him in conversations we had about what this conversation would be like, and just talking about the whole diversity issue, the fact that uh, we brought in for the very first time an African-American staff member here at Parkside, we've kind of talked about that, joked about that some, uh, that it's, it's like 42. Uh, here's Jackie Robinson, and he says, I'm Branch Rickey yeah. in this whole uh, saga. I see the resemblance. Yeah. You, I don't know about that, but anyway. Uh, the good news is, is that uh, when you took the playing field, uh, you were met with love yes, and absolutely. acceptance, and um, everybody just so glad to have you with us. Yeah. So... I told you when I, I'll shut up and let you talk in just a second here. Uh, you're doing but, very uh, well. <laughs> when we interviewed the fir very first time when I met Lynn face to face, we were at Skyline Chili. And I said, I told him here just recently, I said, I didn't hire you because you're a black man. You could have blindfolded me there at Skyline, Ch Skyline Chili. And in that conversation, I would have hired you because it's obvious, it was obvious to me then and even more so now that you're a godly man, that the Holy Spirit has had great sway in your life. Praise God. And you are the man that I wanted to have here, we wanted to have here influencing our kids and our community, and, and you have done that. So the fact that your African-American was just icing on the cake and just made it that much better. And my hope was that we'd become instantly more diverse. And that didn't exactly happen, but uh, you, broke, you broke ground. So, all right, I'll shut up. What would you like to say? You know, I, I was kind of um, sharing with a few people just during this process um, that when I started in student ministry, um, it was like a couple months right after my wife had our daughter. Um, and then I started like right into it just uh, January 2016. And I always wondered like, you know, God, why didn't you just, you know, let me get comfortable being a father first before you put me in full-time ministry. But I realized that God was kind of showing me that if you can love every student, the same way you love your daughter. That's good. I said I was done being emotional. <laughs> but then you can make an impact in her life. And I think that's, if, if I was to be remembered for anything, it would just be just how we, it says it right up there when you walk in the park, so I love God, love others, and help them do the same. You know, and, and I realized that that's what makes me effective is just loving every student just like I love my little Tukey bear, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's a YouTube video. I know it's a different direction than we went earlier. Um, but there's a YouTube video, I think it's called 936 Marbles by Josh Ship or something like that. And it basically just talks about how one adult stepping up in um, somebody's life, um, a student's life every week can be that difference maker and making a success story at what society would say is a horror story, you know. So I just challenge, you know, as I leave, that you find somebody. Who, who can you step up for? Who has God uniquely gifted you to invest in, to pour into, to love on, to be that one person to make a difference in our life? We realize, and, and it's something that, you know, uh, my license plate say God made, but the quote behind that is I, I was looking on Google like God made, God made, you know, and I ran across something that said, God made me different so that I can make a difference. And I believe he's calling us all to make a difference. And I believe that he's allowed me to be here at Parkside because I've developed and grown. I feel a little wired up now. That's okay. Um, yeah. Maybe the coffee, I don't know. Um, but I, I've grown personally. I've grown professionally. I've grown as a husband. 
I've grown as a father, and it's because God has allowed me to glean from great men here at Parkside. And you guys allowed me to be, and let me be myself. Yay! Right? <laughs> hey, I feel the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but, you know, I appreciate you guys for, for just doing that and just embracing me, like Bart said, with love. You know, it's just been awesome. And that's what's, you know, for me, it's been hard, you know. It's been hard because it's like, in a sense, I feel like I'm, I'm walking away from my children. You know what I mean? Because I really love every student just like I love my daughter, you know. And just um, I know that God has great things in store. Rachel, Men Rachel Menzel! Woo! Okay. Parkside Zone! Okay. All right. Let me calm back down. But, you know, she's going to pick up and hit the ground running, and it's, it's just going to be awesome. Okay, I'm finished. Hmm. That's good. That really hurts. Doesn't that hurt when you do that? You've got to be careful with that. <laughs> so do you want to talk about that other that we talked about? Or that was so good. I don't know. I kind of would just want to leave that laying there. But you want to talk about the other, um, like last summer? I, w I would say, yeah, we probably should talk about it just because um, okay. I don't want you guys to think like, oh, I just came into here and, you know, everything was real easy and real smooth. And it was just like I'm walking on a bed of roses. You know, there was some moments where there was some friction and, and some, some challenges and some um, things that we had to talk about that wasn't like the fun conversation, you know. Um, a lot of times, you know, when people see differences, um, for example, like if Bart – eats pizza and he puts jelly on it, right? Like, that's very different, right? It's like weird, like, dude, like, how are you going to put jelly on pizza, right? It doesn't make sense. But it's just different. I shouldn't push him away because he's different than me. Come on, somebody. I should be willing to embrace his differences, understanding that there's something in him that he can impart in me that would help me and vice versa. I can't let what's different from me Keep me from embracing him as a brother. Proverbs 17 and 17 says, I feel my health right now. It, it says um, that a friend loveth at all times, but a brother, yay, okay, is born from <laughs> adversity. And the adversity that we experience causes us to come closer together as brothers. When society says it shouldn't be this way. Watch out, kingdom. See, what, 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 what society is trying to stir up I believe that in the kingdom, God is doing the opposite. So where we see division in society, God is calling us to unity. Yeah. I'm preaching right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. This is kingdom. Okay. What he say? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Don't you know it's unity in heaven? There's no strife. We should be able to love each other, not because we all have similarities and we all um, shop at the same place or go to the same store, but we should know that that's the image of God. That's the Imagio Day. He's created in this image just like I am. I'm sitting down now. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting down. Man, I don't want you to leave. I know, right? <laughs> okay. We got, uh, what he's referring to is last summer, we got into a difference, a, a large difference of opinion. And didn't really see it coming, but there it was. And we were trying to figure that out. You know, what's, what's going on? Is this, is this theology? Is this cultural? Is it racial? What is it? And the thing that was the worst about it was that I saw that I had confused you. And I had confused Tasha. And I had maybe disappointed you and even hurt you. And I felt terrible about that. But it was an honest difference of yeah. opinion. But the thing that I appreciate so much is that you didn't give up on me. Not at all. You hung in there with Jesus me. Jesus ain't give up on me. I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> I always said I was going to do that. If you've, those, of you in, those of you in student ministry, that was no big deal, right? That was mild. Yeah. But I appreciate I appreciate that as brothers, we were able, and sister, were able to sit down and talk and talk and talk. And I don't know that we came to a complete agreement on things, but we agreed that we love each other. Absolutely. And we trust each other. And we didn't give up on each other because, like you said, Jesus doesn't give hey, up on us. Hey, hey. Okay. 
I got a special gift for you. You, you need this. You know, when, when Lynn preaches, oh. <laughs> when Lynn preaches, he always carries a towel. Come on, somebody. Himself. So this is a very special Lynn Woods preaching towel. Wow, that is awesome. And in case you get stuck and don't know what to say, here are some phrases that you can, you want to you call those out for us? Okay, it says Pastor Lynn Woods preaching towel. I'm feeling it now. Oh, yeah. come on. Okay. Come on. Oh. I'm feeling it now. Okay. There you go. I'm about ready to run. <laughs> Man, I want to throw this chair. Whoa. <laughs> hey! There you go. Some Thank of you your favorites. That. And Thank then here's some that. things oh. to remember Parkside by. Yes. Love God. Love people. Help others do the same. We may not have it all together. Come but, on. But together we have it all. Come as you are. Become more than you can imagine. Yes. And this is just one of my favorites. It comes out of Romans 5. There is more grace in God than there is sin in people. Come on. Yeah. Where sin increased, grace yeah. abounded all the more. Yes. There, you take that That's to Florida word. with yes. you. Woo! Yeah. I feel it now. Well, I'm feeling it too. I got one more thing I want to share. You've impacted me in a lot of ways and stretched me and molded me and made me a better man than I would be otherwise. But I've just gotten real creative and emotional since... Uh, Found out that you're leaving. So I have written a spoken word. A spoken word in honor of Lynn and Tasha Woods and their time with us. Now, this is a white man's spoken word, <laughs> but it's powerful. So here we go. Congratulations, Lynn Woods. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have Holy Spirit. You have feet in your shoes. God will steer you in any direction He chooses. You've packed all your boxes. You know what you know, and God is the one who says how it will go. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as smart and as holy as you. As soon as they happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the things that you'll do. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to great heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass all the rest, and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. And wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? I'm sorry, I'm spitting on you. And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Love. Or right and three quarters? Or maybe not quite? Well, go around back and sneak in from behind. Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. But somehow you'll know what should happen just then. Holy Spirit will help you know how to move, when. With dreadlocks flip-flapping and hands loudly clapping, you'll be ready for anything with toes all a-tapping. God will put all you need within reachable reach as you suffer for Jesus down there on the beach. Oh, the places you'll go. There is fun to be done. There are sermons to preach. There are souls to be won. There are kids to be loved and your family to care for. Tasha and Tuki, what a pair you are there for. You'll serve with your friends every day after day. Pastor Sean, that big scoundrel who lured you away. And Branson and Dawson and other good friends, what a happy reunion that never will end. On and on you will run, and I know you'll run far and face up to problems, whatever they are. And will you succeed? Absolutely, indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. So, Lynn Woods, you'll move mountains. You have that kind of faith. <laughs> Greater things than our Lord is a promise he makes. So you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. I love you, brother. <laughs> Tasha, would you come here? Is, can I have one of the elders? One of the elders come up here and pray. Greg, would you come up? Any, anybody else that wants to? But I want to have uh, an elder prayer for you guys. Anybody else wants to come up around them and touch them and uh, 
Just be with them and around them. Come do that. Here, Greg. Father God, we're thankful that they're here. I know time may seem short, but uh, in your kingdom, it's it's everlasting in our hearts. We're thankful that they've spent uh, these 18 months with us, and we're so excited for what comes next. Only you know that you promised uh, something new and exciting for their lives, and we know you'll fulfill that. We're thankful for what they've taught our kids, and we pray that these kids will take away the lessons Lynn has taught in all the different ways he's shown your love to them. I pray that they would remember and go forward uh, with all the thoughts and memories that he has provided to how to love you, Jesus, and we're so thankful that he's presented that message in so many new ways to them. I just know that they'll never forget him. We're thankful for their love as a family, and I pray that you would continue to bless and encourage them and give them a new home that's uh, full of your love and just help them land well in Florida. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the towel's coming in handy. You heard Lynn give a shout out to Rachel Menzel, and uh, you'll hear about that at the end of service today, what, what that's all about. As we look at the rhythms of, of life that help us to grow deep and be rooted in God, one of the things that we have to come to terms with is the reality of adversity in our lives and how God uses that to grow us up and grow us strong. Jesus one time was walking along with his disciples. <clears throat> this is in John's history of Jesus. It's in chapter 9. You can read the whole thing. And they saw a man who had been, he had been blind all his life. He was born blind. And they asked him, they said, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? And that's kind of a common thing to ask. Maybe when you're in a, in a bad situation, trouble comes along, maybe you take one of two approaches to that with regard to God. Uh, it could be that you feel betrayed by God. God, how could you let this happen? Or abandoned by God because when you pray that it will be resolved or go away, it doesn't. It seems like he's not doing anything. The other approach is to look at these times, these hard times in our lives and say, well, I must have had this coming. I guess there was a sin somewhere, and God just dropped the hammer on me. I deserve this. Well, that was very common in Jesus' day for people to approach suffering in that way. God is punishing us. Jesus gives a very interesting answer to them. He says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. And while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. He said this happened so that the reality of God could be put on display, so that people could see the power of God and could be drawn to him and find life. That's the reason this man was born blind. And that happened. Jesus healed the man. Crazy way that he did it. <laughs> Stuck mud in his eyes. <laughs> And healed him of his blindness, but it was obviously Jesus that made it happen. And this man found salvation. Not only did he find his sight, he found salvation in Christ. And there were a lot of other people who were drawn to Christ and to God as well. Because who could deny that God had his hand in this? Only God could give sight to a blind man. So a very good thing happened in the midst of 40 years of struggle in this man's life. The question I want to ask this morning is, are you okay with what Jesus said here as the reason he gave for this man's suffering? Is it okay with you that God allows suffering and uses suffering and even uses your suffering to make himself known in the midst of a lot of pain? Are you okay with that? There are two things we know for sure. 
One thing we know for sure is that sometimes God answers our prayers just the way we want him to. God, please heal. God, please provide. Please turn this situation in a better direction. And he does. He, he steps in. He turns it. And it's obviously the hand of God. And we praise him and we thank him for his goodness and his mercy when he does that. We know that for sure that sometimes he does that. And we know for sure that sometimes he doesn't do that. You look at, you read the Bible. All through the Bible, you see that there are good and godly people who suffered. And sometimes God delivered them and sometimes he didn't. Why? Why sometimes yes and sometimes no? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The one thing we do know for sure is this, that when God allows us to suffer, it all works to his advantage. The main purpose and reason behind it is to work to his advantage, at least in the lives of the people who know him and love him and trust him. It always works to his advantage. And that's why he allows it. And that's the hump we have to get over. That's the hump that I have to get over. To understand, to get past my assumption that God's biggest priority in life is for me to be happy and to be safe and to be comfortable. God's desire for me is not to be happy. I am not the center of God's universe, and neither are you. God is the center of God's universe. And sometimes his purposes are served the very best when my purposes are not served at all. That's a hard truth, but it's truth. Because we live in a culture that caters to us in every way, especially the marketers. They come to us day after day. What would it take to make you happy? What would it take to meet your every need and to invite you in as one of our customers? That's, that's the environment that we live in, and God takes that and he turns it completely on his head. Because God isn't interested in pursuing my comfort. God is interested in developing my character into his likeness, which is, first of all, the very best for him because it makes him known. People can see him when they see him in me, and ultimately that's the very best for me, even when it takes something painful to bring that about. Pain is often the best and maybe the only way to accomplish the likeness of Christ in our lives and to help us to grow beyond ourselves into something more, into someone more that he has in mind for us. It's like going to a surgeon who says, yeah, I'm going to have to cut on you, and it's going to hurt, and there's, there's going to be a painful recovery from that, but you're going to get well. You need this, and you're going to get well. There's something good on the other side of this, and that's what God says to us. He's like a good parent. You know, a good parent lets their kids go through painful times. They don't always jump in to spare them of disappointment or failure or discipline or trouble. Sometimes a good parent, a good loving parent, lets it ride because they know that character, good character, strong character is going to come out of that. And so you got to step back. And sometimes God says, I just got to step back. This is the lesson you'll learn, and it's a good one. But I will be with you. I don't, I don't want to diminish your pain this morning. Some of you are going through a desperate time, a terrible time. And you wonder if God cares. And I can assure you that he does. That promise on the wall out there next to the water fountain is true. Cast all your cares, all your burdens on him because he cares about you. But sometimes he cares about you enough to let it ride. And to be there with you and to strengthen you and to comfort you and to assure you that he will never let you go. Like that song we sang to him earlier. But sometimes we've just got to go through it. Listen to these teachings from the Word. We boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Suffering can produce tenacity in our faith. What it means to hang on to God with all we've got because he's all we've got. 
and to know he's hanging on to us. Perseverance develops character and character develops hope because we learn that we can count on God, that we can trust God even in these dark times. And hope doesn't put us to shame. Hope doesn't disappoint because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This was written by a man who suffered terribly and finally was executed for his faith in Christ. And he believed every word of what he said there. The Apostle Paul. Another man wrote and said, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. <laughs> Consider it joy, pure joy, because you know that the testing of your faith, times of suffering, produces tenacity, endurance, perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, so much more like Christ and lacking in nothing. Written by the brother of Jesus, James half-brother of Jesus, who finally was executed for his faith in Christ. And he meant every word of what he wrote there. The question that we have to ask ourselves is this. Given the choice, would you rather be pain-free or would you rather become much more like Jesus and bring great honor to God in the process? And you might ask, well, is it, does it, does it have to be either or? Well, no, not always. Not always. There are good times, aren't there? There are joyful times. There are times of blessing when we are so overwhelmed by God's goodness that he brings to us. We just think, how could it be any better? But then there are those other times. And yes, sometimes that's what it takes to bring honor and glory to God, for him to do something in us, to make himself known that will be made known in no other way. It comes down to perspective. Paul wrote, writing a letter to a young man, he said, To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. It really comes down to the condition of our heart. When we get into times of, of darkness and struggle, these things that become like, a, they can be a stronghold that lock us up in our faith. And we as followers of Jesus need to understand and learn this lesson. It's so important that as he purifies our heart, when we look at these circumstances that we go through and we say, it couldn't be any worse than this, we understand that this is a testing time, that it's a growing time. And rather than gritting our teeth and closing our eyes and saying, tell me when it's over, God, please just take it away, take it away. I hate this. Nothing good can come from this. Instead of that, we say, all right, where's the gold in this fire? There's gold in here. God promises there is. What can I learn? What about me that doesn't look like Jesus can be chipped off right now from my life? How can I demonstrate what faith really is in the presence of people who don't know God yet and don't understand him? That's a pure heart. Looking for the purity of God in times of struggle. But there are people who have corrupt hearts. There were people with corrupt hearts when Jesus healed this man who had, who's, who had suffered so terribly. And, and they looked a miracle of God right in the face and called it evil. They just couldn't see it. They said, this is some blasphemous evil that this man is committing. See, the sun can have two different effects. The sun can soften butter. The sun can harden clay. Times of adversity can come into our lives and it can either soften us and, and draw us toward God and we can learn from God and feel his presence there or it can drive us away from God. And those of us here this morning, and many of us, most of us are followers of Jesus. This is such an important lesson that we have to learn. We know that in all things, God works for good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. We've got to understand what the greatest good is, and the greatest good is God's good, not my good. Well, this, uh, this man got thrown out of the synagogue finally. If you read to the end of that chapter, chapter 9, he refused to deny his faith in Christ. The religious rulers, the ones with the corrupt hearts, the hard hearts, were trying to attribute this to, to something other than what they knew to be true, that Jesus was God in flesh. And this was the power of God at work. So the man wouldn't cave, and they, th they excommunicated him. They threw him out of the synagogue. And so Jesus went and found the man. And I didn't realize until I just reread this again this week that Jesus, up to this point, 
This man had not seen Jesus physically after the healing. Jesus put the mud in his eyes, said, go wash the mud out of your eyes. And then Jesus left, washed his eyes, sight was restored. Then he came back and Jesus talks to him. And he says, um, he th heard that he'd been thrown out and he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Probably recognized the voice but wasn't sure who he was looking at at that point. And Jesus said, you've now seen him. He said, you're looking at him. For the very first time, you're looking at him. You're looking at your Savior. You're looking at your Messiah. He is, in fact, the one speaking with you. And the man said, Lord, I believe. And he got down on his hands and knees and he worshiped him. He knew he was in the presence of God and that he had found life. He would found spiritual sight along with physical sight. And Jesus said, for judgment I've come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. So there are two lessons for us here today. For anyone here who is not a follower of Jesus, if you come because you're curious, you're seeking, you're wondering, you're pondering, I hope that this morning your eyes will be opened by what you read here in this historical account. That you have a desperate need in your life for a Savior. We all do. Every one of us does. It's the human dilemma. Sin and rebellion in our lives that separates us from God. And I pray that this morning, God, that Jesus will give you your sight to understand that. And that you will come to embrace him and worship him. Acknowledge him as your Savior, as your God. And submit yourself to him. Confess your faith in him. Be baptized into his name and, and follow him the rest of your life. And, and find life in both the good times and in the hard times. He'll be there and he'll never let go of you. I pray that your eyes will be open this morning. And for so many of us who are followers of Jesus, learn this lesson. That everything in life, everything, the good things and the tough things, the very desperate hard things, can be a means to becoming more like Jesus and drawing positive attention to him by the way that he helps us to persevere, to struggle, to hang on, to persevere, to not give up, and to demonstrate what real faith is to the people around us who may come to God through us for the very first time. Jesus is the one who is our perfect example. Hebrews chapter 12 says, let us run with perseverance. That word just keeps coming up, doesn't it? Run with perseverance this race that's marked out for us, which can get hard at times. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he got nailed up to a cross. How does that happen? How do you feel joyful about going to a, one of the most horrible ways ever to die? Roman crucifixion. Yeah, for the joy set before him, he went to the cross. He scorned the shame. But when it was all said and done, when he died for the sins of mankind, when he defeated the biggest weapon that Satan had by coming back to life on that third day, and as he ascended and as, now as he sits at the right hand of God and intervenes for us and intercedes for us and strengthens us and encourages us through his spirit, that's the joy. That's the joy that was his and that's the joy that is ours knowing that yes, in this life you have pain, Jesus said. In this life you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, and I will help you overcome the pain of this life to be finally ushered into the life where there is no pain. And it all comes full circle. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Don't lose heart. In this time of darkness, if that's where you are, this might be the time that you come to know Jesus in a deeper way than you have ever known him before. And you may grow in Christ in bigger ways than you've ever been able to before. Give God a chance to use this to his glory and to your blessing. We're going to sing in response to this. We're going to praise God some more for the truth that has just been expressed here. And then we're going to spend time with him in what we call communion. If you're first time here, People will come to the rows and they'll pass trays that will have bread and juice in them, just a little bit. And these are symbols of the body and the blood of Jesus. As 
as because of the joy, because of knowing he was in the will of the Father, he went to a cross and he died for us. And this is how we remember his body and his blood, his sacrifice. And we thank him for what he did. And we ask him for the strength to endure and to persevere and to be the people that he's helping us to become. Let's stand and sing.